Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about if Dragon Age the Veilguard is as good as the reviews say. Now, this game has got a lot of 9 out of 10 reviews across the board. I did previously in an unbiased review and I have my opinion changed as I got further into the game. It does have a strong start to it, but is this game really the 9 out of 10 or even some outlets saying 10 out of 10 game that people deserve? I don't think it's that good and that's the short answer but getting into things we'll just look at some of the most popular reviews here so we got IGN which gave this game a 9 out of 10 your whole squad is made up of complex memorable and likable companions now I can strongly disagree on this I don't think that this game has very impactful companions compared to some of the other Bioware games that we've had in the past especially in the Dragon Age franchise itself Origins and even inquisition this is a hot take i think that inquisition had companions that were much more memorable than the ones that we have here now that is kind of a problem because i don't feel that compelled to do their companion quest lines i have been doing them just because i want to get the full experience here but they're quite boring i'll be fully honest with you they don't feel like they're characters that have a very deep plot it almost feels like a marvel movie in terms of the jokes that get told there's some very serious tones and especially with the story itself the whole world is literally ending and people treat it as if it's no big deal. But uh, here, in a sense, Bioware RPG is all about the companions. And that's where a lot of my discontent comes from because the companions don't feel like they were made very well in terms of their story. Uh, no of the friends we make along the way, this might be Bioware's, the most Bioware game of all time. There is seven companions here, but yeah, I don't find them to be that memorable, to be honest. Not only is the whole squad made of complex, memorable, likable, distinct personalities from across the East, but they're also treated as stars of their own story. Yeah, they do have their own character uh, companion quests, so that is one thing with uh, this game. So if we look at our companions here, they all got their own quest lines that you can go through. So we got Belara, whose head is 50% too big for her own body. We got Davern here, who might be one of my favorites, but he's very emotional at times. Uh, probably my favorite emmerich here who's got a funny companion um we also got harding which i don't know some people will really like harding i just found her to be kind of boring and uh we got lucanus who's one of my favorites as well i think this character is decently wrote but uh, you do have to make a big plot choice at the start and he doesn't like me that much now <laughs> nev who wears this stupid looking hat but also one of my favorites and the character that i'm trying to get the romance with just to go that route but also doesn't really have anything major going for her i found that some of her lines are just kind of dry then we got tosh here which is one that's been very uh very controversial to say the least um i like inclusion but if it's done well and not in a slap to the face to those that they're trying to represent which i think is what's happening here unfortunately now we do have i mean an interesting group of characters like balara davern emmerich harding lucanus nev and tosh they're very it's a very diverse cast however there doesn't seem to be much cohesion between them all we really get is the companions kind of fighting against each other they don't feel like a buddy buddy group like we've gotten in Baldur's Gate 3 now to compare this game to Baldur's Gate 3 is not fair because they're very different games despite Bioware making Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 Baldur's Gate 3 is a master class in what to do right in a video game and this game obviously isn't that but for IGN to give this game a 9 out of 10 and say that Veilgard is light on that classic kind of sign quest that helps find bingo bongo some nug grease. Well, yeah, that's literally what these quests do end up feeling like. Like, I did some companion quests, and I can't even tell you what the story was with it, because listening to the cutscenes, I'm just confused. It doesn't feel as enthralling as some of the companion quests that you do get in Baldur's Gate 3. I could tell you every single detail about those quests, because there's just so much deep story writing in them. The story in this is not that intense, so... um. It's like the Raiders took the loyalty missions from Mass Effect 2 and blew them up to seven miniature games of their own. I think that that's an overstatement, but uh, yeah, just wanted to highlight this review here from IGN because I know a lot of people trust IGN, I guess. I wouldn't say to uh, after they gave Sparking Zero a seven and Concord a seven. But uh, here from Forbes, over a dozen hours, I did up end up liking my team quite a bit. But I did regret my romance choice. I won't say who, but by the time I figured I wanted to switch, my two end TVs indicated they were the my true romantic officer prospects. I didn't want to be a jerk. If you're wondering, this game is where choices matter. You know, you speak to one playthrough. Choices do matter in this game. That is one thing that I've noticed. But the choices, 
some of the choices make it feel like they do matter and they don't but there is one major choice that you have to make pretty early on in the game and the, the effects of that are pretty devastating on one of the characters that you don't choose so there is one really big one i'm at chapter 9 of 13 so i'm pretty far into the game now um my opinion may change a little bit near the end but from what i've seen i'm not too sure but um yeah <laughs> a lot of these outlets like this gave it an 8.5 out of 10 and talking about the companion quest lines being well wrote i don't think that the writing is very strong in this game at all i'll be completely honest that's just my opinion on where the writing is i don't feel like it's that strong now, we also got this review here, which gave it a perfect 5 out of 5 score. And uh, in many ways, this is a game of your complex uh, companions. This game approaches complex tro uh, tropics in this world, like topics like gender identity, neurodiversity, personal trauma, and parenthood, and each is handled gently and unobtrusively. Disagree. <laughs> I do think, and mat with maturity and care. I don't think that they really handle a lot of these things well. A lot of it was like shoved in your face, not handled well. Like the push-up scene is the one that I can't stop thinking about. They did not handle that well. I would be very upset if I was part of that group and seeing that's how representation was given as it was just almost a spit in the face. Like just the, the idea of it was forced there, but it wasn't done well. And uh, for these things to be impactful, they have to be done well. Like how Baldur's Gate 3 has handled a lot of its tones. Again, can't compare these games to Baldur's Gate 3, but this just is not true. This game, gave, or this outlet, uh, Eurogamer, gave it a 5 out of 5 score. That's a perfect score for a game that they said did the, these topics perfectly with gently, unobtrusively, with maturity and care. I don't think that they were handled that way, I'll be honest. From everything that I've seen, it's almost been just weirdly handled uh that's just my thoughts i guess um i flirted with everyone for hours before committing to tosh but no was given yeah i don't know they gave it a five out of ten and i i just can't agree with that and kodaku here um <laughs> they also gave it a pretty good review the veil vale guards collection of companions perhaps is most consistently engaging one bioware has given us yet in the franchise i don't think so i personally agree i like dragon age origins a whole lot more for the companions I like Dragon Age Inquisition a whole lot more for companions. Dragon Age 2 is even better with its companions than this game. So that is unfortunate. I do think that like there is some there is some good things to see here, but uh, I keep seeing the review outlets saying that the companions are really great, really great. And I think that misguided me because I thought at first that this was going to get better when I first started playing it, but it hasn't in the hours, 20 some hours, 25 some hours that I put into this game. It has not gotten better, unfortunately. So um this is the first time a dragon age party has felt like family to me i found fewer points of tension within the group as i mentioned i found that they kind of don't mesh well and they've been fighting at least in my playthrough even when i've done something that could have been a deal breaker for one of my teammates i feel like easier to smooth over than before there's some standout haters and rivalries but less of the actively wishing death upon each other thing than before so yeah i don't know i don't agree with that either i feel like the companions don't really mesh well together um, they all do come from different backgrounds within the game, so that does cause some kind of meshing that doesn't work out perfectly. Um, kind of like I do think of Shadowheart and Lazel and how they hated each other in Baldur's Gate 3, but that was done really well. Now, the final one that we have here is Games Radar. So uh, another one. Well, I love all my stupid companions equally. Tosh was a romance dark horse for me that came out of nowhere. So you'll understand why if you play. And I found the vast majority of the choice to be lacking significant teeth, barring the very end of the game. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of these outlets that were giving it like a 9 or 10, a 10 out of 10, I, I just don't feel like it was truthful. Um, it's not the same game that I'm playing, at least. Well, I've played a lot of this so far. The one thing that I do think is nice is the combat in this game. So I give it some points for that. And that's basically what I was liking the most about the game so far. So... It does have a pretty nice setup of combat. So if you're someone that's looking for a fun RPG, action RPG, the combat's okay, but I do feel like the story and the writing itself has been one of the biggest blunders in this game. So it does miss out on a lot of things that could have made this a great game. It doesn't have that same dark fantasy setting that Origins had, all because the characters are just joking around and quipping like they're Spider-Man every few minutes. So that does cause a lot of friction between having a good story, I I feel at least, but uh, at least the combat's good. That's one good thing about this, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's just my thoughts on Dragon Age. Is it as good as the reviews say? 
I wouldn't say so. Is this a bad game? I wouldn't say it's a bad game. There are some things that I wish they did differently, and I've been thinking that a lot as I play through it. I really do wish they did a lot of things differently, and I wish they returned, like, the world. This screams that it could be a dark fantasy game. Until you look at the characters, my character, I can't for the life of me make a character that's not ugly. Um, but yeah, the companions themselves, I wish that they just did a little bit more with them. Um, I don't, I don't know what's missing. It just feels like it's missing something to make it an iconic Bioware game. I wouldn't give this like a really low score, but I also wouldn't give it a 9 out of 10, a 10 out of 10, definitely not. And I, I previously said it could be an 8 out of 10. I don't even think I would give it that at this point. We shall see when I beat the game where that stands. But I just want to talk about this because I was getting a lot of hate on from people that said that I treated the game too nicely and I should have been way more harsh. Uh, but I went through and I played it and I'm starting to agree that, yeah, I might have been a little bit nice with what it what it is. Still not a bad game. I don't want to say it is a bad game because the combat itself is pretty fun. I give it that. But there's just too much going on with the writing that I just don't think makes it feel like a good game. So just want to get my thoughts on that. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful to you, please hit the subscribe button below and I'll see you all in the next video.